we're going to be talking about product costing. How do firms that make their goods know what it cost them since they didn't buy it? What did it cost them to make? There are three major ingredients, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. First, direct material. Those are the large components, the large ingredients or parts. We leave out of direct the category of direct material very, very tiny parts that are too fussy to count, like drops of oil or staples or nails. That We classify those in manufacturing overhead as indirect materials. Direct labor is the cost of actually the workers that are making it or running the machines that are making it. Manufacturing overhead includes quite a few costs. The indirect materials, the very tiny stuff. Indirect labor, the cost to hire, train, supervise, and schedule. In other words, managing the direct labor. And then all the costs of the factory. So the utilities, securities, fans, you name it. Rent, depreciation having to do with the factory. So let's work with the terms a little bit. Product and non-product costs are two major categories and then within product costs it can be direct or indirect. Let's review these. Factory rent, factory costs, but it's not direct labor or direct material, so it's an indirect product cost. The legal department is needed, but it's not part of making the thing. Scheduling software is part of managing direct labor, so that would be indirect. The glue on the seats would be very small materials, too difficult to count, so it would be an indirect material. The ad campaign, you must advertise to customers to get them to come buy your stuff, but that's not part of the cost of making it. The tire rims and the dashboards are both major ingredients for a car, so those would, would be direct material. The labor to install the doors, that is actually putting fingerprints on the product, that is direct labor, and then the utilities of the factory are indirect or manufacturing overhead. Here are the three inventory counts that manufacturing firms have. The inventory for the materials, which goes up by what you buy and down by what you use. The work in process, which includes the materials used for the period, the labor that was incurred during the period, and then the collection of all the manufacturing overhead items. Those go in, these are feeding work in process. As the items are complete, they're removed from work in process and they go over to finished goods. Finished goods go up by what you made and then down by what you sold. So those are our cost flows. Let's work a problem to practice these. So freeze the frame or print the frame for yourself and we will walk through them together. The first thing I want to do is remove the non-product cost because I already see some, like the corporate tax department. Then I'm going to find the manufacturing overhead. I'm going to add up all the items in manufacturing overhead so I get the total number. And then I'm going to put all of these things in the T accounts to figure out the cost per unit and then cost of goods sold. Here are the non-product costs. Did you find them? All right, next, let's find the manufacturing overhead items. There we go. Did you find them? There's indirect labor, supervising the labor, the cost of the factory, and the cost of the parts, small parts. Okay, now we're ready to put the items in the cost flow accounts. Direct material, I'm going to take, they give us the beginning and the ending and what they bought, and so I can solve for raw material or direct material used. Next, work in process. So they gave us the beginning and the ending. They gave us the factory time cards. That's the labor that was worked. And then they give us manufacturing overhead. So now we're ready for work in process. So here they gave us the beginning and the ending, and we have the material used, which we computed on the prior slide, and we have direct labor, which they gave us, the factory time cards. And then we added up the 53,000 on the earlier slide, and so we, those all make work and process go up, 
and then they told us that they had some of it left over. The rest must have been finished and sent over to finished goods. So that's cost of goods made. And cost of goods made is how we figure out cost per unit. Let's do that now. So cost per unit divided by units made, not units sold. We can't figure out what it costs us to make based on what we sold. It's based on what we made. So it costs us $2.80 per unit. So that's below the $5 that customers paid, paid us. So that's good. That's our gross profit, right? The difference between sales and cost of the unit. So now we get cost of goods sold. So since we know the cost per unit and how many we sold, there, that is cost of goods sold. Now we can create an income statement from the original set of facts. So we have the unit sold. We just figured out cost of goods sold. There's our gross profit. And then here were the non-product costs that we originally scratched off the first set of data as saying that those were non-product costs. And so those become operating expenses. And there's our operating profit for the period. So you've reviewed the instruction. Now you can go work your class activities and check them. Complete your homework, check those, and then you're ready for your quiz in D2L.